Yes, guys, the next question, question number eight. Rich Per decided to amalgamate their business with a view of public issue and a holding company, Mix Limited, will be incorporated on 1st May 2011 with an authorized capital of 60 lakhs divided into 10 rupees shares. The company will acquire the entire ordinary shares of Rich and Poor Limited in exchange of their own equity shares. The consideration on acquisition is to be ascertained by multiplying the estimated profits available to the ordinary shareholders with the agreed P ratio. The following relevant figures are given. So for the valuation he is using P model that is EPS into sorry profits available to equity shareholders into P ratio. So if you are given the P ratios and also the earnings you can calculate the, the purchase consideration. The shares in the holding company are to be issued to the members of the subsidiary at on 1st June at a premium of 2.5 rupees per share and thereafter these shares will be marketable on stock exchange. It is anticipated that the merger will achieve significant economics but will not necessitate any additional working capital. Accordingly, it was planned that on 31st December 2011, Mix Limited will make a further issue of 60,000 ordinary shares to the public at a, for cash at a premium of 3.75 per share. These shares will not rank for dividend on 31st December 2011. In the period ending 31st December 2011, bank overdraft facilities will provide funds for the payment of Mix Limited preliminary expense of 50,000 and management expenses of 6,000. It is further estimated that interim dividend on ordinary shares relating to the period from 1st Jan to 31st December 2011 will be paid on 31st December 2011 by Mix Limited at 3.5%, rich 5%, poor 2%. You are required to project on 31st December 2011 for Mix Limited the balance sheet as it would appear immediately after the fully subscribed share issue and the PL account for the period ending 31st December 2011. Assume that the corporate tax rate is 40% and you can make other assumptions where you consider relevant. First, think about PC. We'll think about the further transactions later. Think only about PC. For the PC computation, he is talking about. In the third, in the second para, the consideration for acquisition is to be ascertained by multiplying the estimated P ratio, the estimated profits available to ordinary shareholders by the agreed P ratio. So basically my value or PC should be calculated like this. Profits available to equity shareholders multiplied by P ratio. How do you get profits available to equity shareholders? Check the table below. Estimated annual maintainable profits before deduction of debenture interest and taxation is given to you. So that is PBIT. Profits before interest and tax. Deduct interest you get PBT. Deduct tax you get PAT. But I need profits available to equity shareholders. So deduct again preference dividend. That will be profits available to equity shareholders. Multiply with the agreed P ratio which is already given in the table, you get the PC. Come down below, how is it discharging? The shares in the holding company are to be issued to the members of the subsidiary on 1st Jan, sorry, 1st June 2011 at a premium of 2.5 rupees per share and thereafter these shares will be marketable on stock exchange. Now, that will make it simple for us to calculate your purchase consideration, put on adding PC. We are talking about two companies, rich and poor. So let's start with the information given to us. That is as estimated annual, annual maintainable profits before debenture interest and tax. So this is nothing but estimated PBIT. PVIT is 6 lakh and 2 lakh 40. First deduction should be for the interest.
Go on. Check then. There's a 5% debenture existing only in poor limited having a face value of 8 lakhs. 8 lakh into 5% will give you 40,000. After deduction of debenture interest, what we get is estimated PBT. This won't change, this is 6 lakhs and this is 2 lakhs. Less tax. Turn to the last line of the question. Assume that the corporate tax rate is 40%. This is assumed as 40%. So this is 2 lakh 40 and this is 80,000. So this is my estimated PAT. Three lakh sixty and one lakh twenty. Less preference dividend. Check the preference dividend then. The 6% preference is only in poor to a face value of 10 lakhs. $60,000. So this is estimated profits available to equity shareholders. What is the estimated profits available to equity shareholders then? 3,60,000 and 60,000. How do we get PC? PC is equal to profits available to equity shareholders multiplied by their P ratio. So this should be multiplied with the P ratio. P ratios are given in the question as 15 and 10. Sufficient to identify your PCs. PC is 54 lakhs and 6 lakhs. How is he discharging this PC? Come down below. The shares in the holding company that is mixed limited will be issued to the members of the subsidiary that is rich and poor on 1st July 2011. On 1st June 2011 at a premium of 2 rupee 50 paise per share. Come top there the authorized capital of mixed limited is divided into 10 rupee share 2 rupee 50 paise premium. So my issue price per share. Twelve point five. So number of shares to be issued by mix is twelve point five. Calculate. Four lakhs thirty two thousand and forty eight thousand. From here, you need to be pretty careful, guys. Think about this. It is estimated that the merger will achieve significant economics but will not necessitate any additional working capital. Accordingly, it was planned that on 31st December 2011, that is the last date of the financial year, they are making a further issue of 60,000 ordinary shares at a premium of 3.75 rupees per share. 
So we'll think uh, we'll see this later on in the balance sheet. In the period ending on 31st December 2011, bank overdraft facilities will provide funds for the payment of mixed limited preliminary expense of 50,000 and management expenses of 6,000. Preliminary expenses can be written off against the securities premium because you get securities premium here. You can write off the preliminary expense against the securities premium there. But management expenses should be considered in the profit and loss account. It is assumed that interim dividends on ordinary shares relating to the period from 1st June to 31st December 2011 will be paid on 31st December that is not payable it is already paid by 31st December 2011 by mix at 3.5% rich at 5% and poor at 2% he is asking you to identify the PNL and also the PNL account for the period uh, balance sheet as well as the PNL account for the period now to get the balance sheet we have all the values except for PNL and cash if you actually look at preparing a mixed limited balance sheet, what is there in mixed limited balance sheet? They are not doing any extra transactions. So the first transaction should be issue of shares and acquisition of investments. There is the first transaction. The second transaction they have issued some shares for cash. Yes, on the last day. That is one more transaction. The next transaction should be your preliminary expenses and your management expenses paid. There is the next transaction. And the last one is regarding your dividends. So all we are missing out is on two things, cash as well as PNL. Let's try to identify them, then we can directly go for the balance sheet. PNL of mix for six months ending on 31st December. Six months PNL we are supposed to put up. Now think from his incomes. What could be his income? There is no income because Mix Limited does not have any asset. But one asset he has that is the investments. When he has investment, there is some dividend which the other companies are paying. Because Rich Limited is paying three and no, sorry, the Rich Limited is paying dividend at five percent and poor limited at 2%, the entire shareholding is now held by mix limited. You have already acquired all the shares. So once you have acquired all the shares, all this per dividend declared by rich and poor will be received by mix. So let's try to calculate 5% for rich and 2% for poor. Incomes are dividend received. Dividend received from rich and dividend received from poor. Rich limited issued share capital is 30 lakhs, 5%. 5% on 30 lakhs is 1,50,000. Poor, 2% of 12 lakhs, 24,000. This is my income. That's it. There's no other income. There's no other asset, first of all, to earn some income. Check your expenses then. I will not take preliminary expenses to PL, but there is management expenses which should be considered as far as the PL is concerned. My management expenses are 6,000. What else? Any other expenditure that he is paying? Nothing. Other than that, what he has is only dividends paid. He is paying dividend at the rate of 3.5% and very clearly he said the new shares which are issued, that 60,000 additional issue shares, they will not rank for dividend only. So my dividend will be paid only on these shares which are issued to rich and poor. Once again guys, first calculate the profits.
expenses should be reduced 1 lakh 68 I am not taking tax effect guys here. Actually for the profit we need to take the tax effect. But understand these dividends have been received from a company out of their profits after tax one. So a taxation impact again on 1,68,000 will mean a double taxation. Even in your income tax act you are normally exempted from any dividend income received from a company. So I am not considering tax impact at all. I will only consider dividend paid less. He is paying 3.5% dividend on how many shares? 4,32 plus 48,000. The total number of shares are 4,80,000 shares. Each share of 10 rupees each. How much is this? 1,68. My profits remaining are 0. Assuming that dividends received are not chargeable to tax. Normally they are paid out of tax income only guys. So normally we don't apply tax again on that. Profit is zero. Think from cash then. Cash or bank balance as on 31st December 2011. We need to consider cash inflows as well as cash outflows. Think from inflows perspective first. What could be my inflow? Inflow is only the dividend income received. Dividend received that is rich and poor. One lakh fifty thousand and twenty four thousand. One more inflow existing there. Further issue. He clearly said there is a further sixty thousand shares which are issued at a premium of three point seven five each. Issue of shares sixty thousand shares issued at a premium of three point seven five. That means issue price is thirteen point seven five. This is eight lakhs twenty five thousand. These are my inflows. Then outflows bank order after repaying. Guys, don't take expenses separately because expenses have been funded out of bank OD. So how much is funded out of bank OD? Fifty thousand for preliminary expenses and six thousand for management expenses. Bank OD is fifty six thousand. Directly, let's say I paid off 56,000 to bank body, bank body got settled. Next, dividend. Dividend paid 1,68,000. That's it. Story ends there. That is cash balance that you get. This is nine lakh ninety nine inflows and two lakhs twenty four outflow. So cash or bank balance as on thirty first December two thousand eleven is seven lakhs. 
75,000. This is my cash balance. Information sufficient for you to draft your balance sheet. That is what the first part of the question was talking about. Balance sheet of Mix Limited. As on 31st December 2011. Equity and liabilities. Continue the balance sheet guys, come on. Not really difficult at all. People can do this. We'll check your answers again. But please make an effort to get the balance sheet. Check your share capital. How many shares? 432 plus 48 issued as PC, 4 lakh 80 plus 60,000 shares issued to the outsiders, total 5 lakh 40 shares, each share of 10 rupees each. So my total equity share capital is 5 lakh, sorry, 54 lakhs. 60,000 shares issued for cash. So 60,000 plus your PC, 4 lakh 80. 5 lakh 40 into 10, 54 lakhs. My reserves and surplus, there is no p &L, but I have securities premium. What is the value of securities premium? Be careful. First, these 4,80,000 shares were issued at a premium of 2.5 each. I'll start with that. 4,80,000 shares into 2 rupee 50 paise each. Plus, that 60,000 shares were issued at 3.75 premium. Add that also. 60,000 into 3.75 premium. Deduct the preliminary expenses. Preliminary expenses can be written off against securities premium. Preliminary expenses were 50,000. You can write that off against securities premium and the balance securities premium write in the balance sheet. Balance of securities premium put it in the balance sheet. What? There's 13,75,000 securities premium in the balance sheet. There is no PNL. PNL we got it at zero. It's already paid, so we have zero. Then you don't have to write anything. And if you observe, there is no other liability on there. There is no non-current liability because they did not issue any debentures or anything. There is no current liability because it's not doing any business on. So we can actually stop it here. But try to make sure that you are writing the headings.
non current liabilities and current liabilities assets non current assets I don't have a tangible fixed asset or something. I directly will write other non-current assets. Yep, other non-current assets. What we have is investments. Investments in rich and poor. What is your PC? Investments in rich and poor, 54 lakhs and 6 lakhs is your PC. Rich 54, poor 6 lakhs and finally come to your current assets, we have cash. Sixty seven lakh seventy five thousand being your balance sheet total. Yes, guys, turn to the 16th. I'm sorry, 9th. Come on, continue reading. In the 9th question, A Limited will absorb B Limited on 31st March 2012 as a summarized balance sheet as under. So, B Limited balance sheet is given to you with 80,000 shares. And not many items which are given there. Come down below. The consideration was agreed to be paid as follows. A payment in cash of 5 rupees per share in B limited and issue of share of rupees 10 each in A limited on the basis of two equity shares valued at 15 rupees per share and 10% cumulative preference share valued at 10 rupees for every 5 shares held in B. If you read the point number B, he is saying that he is issuing 10 rupees share in such a way that he will give two equity shares valued at 15 rupees, one preference share valued at 10 rupees for every five shares held in B limited. Now he is saying that the whole of the share capital consists of shareholdings in exact multiples of five except the following. Why do I need exact multiples of five? Because your exchange ratio between equity shares is 2 is to 5 and for the preference shares is 1 is to 5. So compulsory I need to have holdings in multiples of five. But he's saying few people are not holding shares in multiples of 5. 
So 116, 76, 72, 28 and 8, these are few individuals who are given to you. 300 shares, they were not in multiples of 5. Out of 80,000, if 300 are not in multiples of 5, that means the remaining are perfectly in multiples of 5. It was agreed that A Limited will pay cash for fraction shares equivalent to the agreed value of B Limited at 65 rupees for 5 shares of 50 paid up. Show the statement of purchase consideration in shares and in cash. Guys, first we need to crack it down. How did he get that 65 rupees for every 5 shares? Try to read the question of PC and try to identify from where he got that 65 rupees. He is saying that for all those fraction shares, he will settle them at 65 rupees for every 5 shares of 50 rupees paid up. How did he get 65 rupees for 5 shares? How many considerations paid? 3. First one cash. Second one equity shares. Third one preference shares. So now check for every 5 shares how much cash you will receive? A cash payment of rupees 5 per share. So if I have 5 shares I will get 25 rupees. 5 into 5. If I add 5 shares how many equity shares I will get? 2 shares. What is the value per equity share? 15. So 2 into 15? 30. Cash 25. Equity share 30, how many preference shares? One preference share, each one valued at 10. So my consideration in preference share is 10 rupees. So 25 rupees cash, 30 rupees equity share, 10 rupees in the form of preference shares. The total is talking about is 65. So that is 65 rupees is talking about. So anyways that is already given to us. If that is not given, we would have calculated it this way. Now first thing that we need to talk about, fraction shares. I need shares in multiples of 5 exactly correct because I need to give 2 is to 5 preference shares or equity shares and 1 is to 5 preference shares unless and until the shareholding is in multiples of 5 I can't give it that way. So if you're talking about let's say this Chopra guy the first one 116 shares 116 how many equity shares will I give into 2 by 5 you won't get a perfect figure. So there are fraction shares here how do we identify fractions I cannot say that the entire 300 shares are fractions absolutely wrong. I will put it this way, if Chopra holds 116 shares, 115 are in multiples of 5. How many fraction shares? One fraction share. To the next guy, Kirky, 76 shares held, 75 in multiples of 5, one share is fraction. Amar Singh, 72 shares, 70 shares are in multiples of 5, two extra shares will be considered as fractions. Malhotra, 28 shares, don't round it off to 30. So, you have 25 shares and multiples of 5 and 3 shares which are fraction shares. And other individuals, 8 members holding 1 share each. So, 5 shares and multiples of 5 and 3 shares of fractions, absolutely wrong. Each person is holding 1 1 share. All the 8 shares will be considered as now fraction shares. So, let's start calculating first fraction shares then we will go back for the remaining problem. Fraction shares. Shareholder. Number of shares held. Highest multiple of 5. And finally, fractions. So, let's fill up first shareholder. Chopra holding 116 shares. Next fellow, Karki, 76 shares. Next one, Amar Singh, 28 shares, Malhotra, no, 72, Malhotra, 
Malhotra holds 28 and other individuals 8. Let's fill up. Highest multiple of 5, 115, fraction share 1. Highest multiple, 75, fraction share 1. 72, 25, 3, nil, 8, total 15. 8 plus 2, 10, 3 plus 2, 15. Fraction shares. How many shares are there in first of all B limited? 80,000 shares. How many fraction shares? 15. So, leaving this 15, remaining 79,985 are in exact multiples of 5. So, let's start now. Put adding purchase consideration. First part of share cap, uh, purchase consideration to holders holding shares in exact multiple of 5. To the shareholders holding shares in exact multiples of 5. Number of shares held. How many shares are there in B limited? 80,000. How many fraction shares? 15. So, 80,000 shares minus 15. So, shareholders holding exact multiples of 5. Number of shares are 79,985. Remaining 15 will take it up separately. To these shareholders, I have three PCs to be paid. PC in cash, PC in equity shares, PC in preference shares. So let's go on. First, purchase consideration in cash. How will you pay? 79,985 into 5 rupees per share. Then, PC in equity shares. Number of equity shares to be issued multiplied by issue price and you will get the answer. How many equity shares should be issued? 79,985 shares, 2 shares for every 5 shares held. Thirty one thousand nine ninety four issue price per share is fifteen, so you get PC in equity shares. Then get PC in preference shares. Number of preference shares to be issued. One is to five preference shares are being issued. So, if I have 79,985 shares into 1 by 5, will give me 15,997. Issue price, each share, preference share is issued at 10. This total is 1,59,970. 
This is preference shares. Equity shares is Four seven nine nine one zero is equity shares. One one lakh fifty nine thousand nine seventy is preference shares. Cash is three lakh ninety nine thousand nine twenty five. But this consideration which we discharged is only to people who are holding in exact multiples of five. That is only seventy nine thousand nine eighty five shares. So we have to give the purchase consideration to fraction shares as well. fraction shares only pc in cash they won't get anything else 65 rupees for every 5 shares held then your fraction shares are 15 how much is the pc in cross multiply 5 shares 65 rupees 15 shares how much three times of that the total pc in cash is 195 the total pc in cash is 195 to fraction shares we're asking you a detailed statement of pc so we have to write down the discharge of pc discharge of pc first one pc in cash two parts are there in cash to the 79985 shares i paid 399925 plus to the fraction shares i paid 195 so 399925 plus 195 is 4120 PC in cash to shares in multiples of five plus PC in cash to fraction shares. PC in equity shares split it between equity share capital and securities premium. How many number of shares equity shares? Thirty one thousand nine ninety four. So three lakhs nineteen thousand nine forty equity share capital, and securities premium is five rupees per share. Five rupees per share is one lakh fifty nine thousand nine eighty nine seventy. I'm sorry, fifty nine thousand nine seventy. And finally, PC in preference shares. There is no securities premium issued at only ten rupees. Preference share capital one lakh fifty nine thousand nine seventy. Strike a total of this. This will be my total PC ten lakhs forty thousand. If you get any doubt, you can cross verify. What is the PC now being distributed? Sixty-five rupees for every five shares held. So per share, how much you are paying? Thirteen rupees. How many shares are there? Eighty thousand shares. Eighty thousand shares into thirteen rupees is again ten lakh forty. You can check.
Yes, guys, question number 10. A limited and B limited amalgamated on and from 1st April 2012 and a new company C limited was formed to take over the business of the existing companies and the summarized balance sheet of A and B is given to you. So nice neatly drafted balance sheet guys. Uh, is there any statutory reserve? Just check. Yep. You have investment elements reserve, statutory reserve. Continue. PCs. 10% debentures are of A limited and B limited are to be discharged by C limited by issuing such number of 15% debentures so as to maintain the same amount of interest. We have already seen a similar adjustment. Preference shares of two companies are issued equal in number of 15% preference shares at a price of 150 rupees per share and C limited will issue 5 equity shares for each equity share of A and 4 equity shares to each equity share of B and the shares are to be issued at 30 rupees having a face value of 10. Investment elements reserve, maintain it for 4 more years and prepare the balance sheet of C limited. Assuming that the amalgamation is by purchase. The amalgamation is by purchase because of the first one. Because the first point is at debentures. Debentures change, definitely it is purchase. So let's start. PC, what method? Payments method because exchange ratios are there. When you have exchange ratio, you can take payments method. PC to preference shareholders, A and B, how many number of preference shares are to be issued, 1 is to 1 ratio. Number of preference shares to be issued by C. 3 and 2, same numbers. Issue price is different. Same numbers because he said equivalent number of shares. Numbers are equivalent. Each share issued at 150 rupees. PC to preference shareholders is 450 and 300. PC to equity shareholders. Number of equity shares in selling company multiplied with their exchange ratio we identify number of shares to be issued. Come on. Number of equity shares. Number of equity shares in A and B is 8 and 7.5. Exchange ratios. Point number C. C limited will issue 5 equity shares for each equity share of A. 5 is to 140. Next. 4 equity shares for each equity share of B. 4 is to 130. Issue price per share, each equity share is issued at a price of 30 rupees. Strike my PC to equity shareholders is 1200 and 900.
go for a discharge of PC. Split it between share capitals and securities premium. PC to preference shareholders. 15% preference share capital. <coughs> Each share is 100 rupees. So 3 into 100. Where is my 300 and 200? With a securities premium. Fifty rupees per share, one fifty and hundred. PC to equity shareholders. Equity share capital. Fourteen to ten rupees share this is. Four hundred. Thirteen to ten. Three hundred. Securities premium again. Each share is issued at 30. Premium is 20 from that. 20 is 800 and 600. And that will give me my total PC of 1650. And uh, 1500. Or 1200. PCs of both A and B are 1650 and 1200. There is a discharge to debenture holders also we have to calculate. Read the first point you get the dis discharge. 10% debentures of A and B will be discharged by C Limited by issuing such number of 15% debentures so as to maintain the same amount of interest. Maintaining the same amount of interest, first of all get the same interest. What is the debenture interest? My debenture interest in A and B right now, I have to calculate and check man. 10% debentures, 6 and 3. What is the yield per debenture in C? 15% Discharge to debenture holders is 6 by 15 percent is 45, 20 or 40 and 20, I'm sorry, 40, 20, no fractions, nothing, second step is identifying nature of amalgamation. And identifying the method of accounting. Nature of amalgamation is purchase because there is a change in the value of debentures. You are not taking debentures at their book values. Book value of the debentures were 60 and 30. You are discharging them at 40 and 20. So there is a change in the book value. So it is a purchase method. First step, always PC. Second step, identifying nature of amalgamation. Third step, if it is a purchase method, then what do we need? We need goodwill or capital reserve to prepare the balance sheet. If it was pooling of interest method, my third working note would be reserves of selling company taken over. So here it is a purchase method. We need to calculate what is the amount of goodwill or capital reserve and then we can go for the balance sheet directly.
Yes, guys, go get this. Computation of goodwill or capital reserve. Two companies, so I'll maintain two columns. A and B. How do we get goodwill or capital reserve? Compare PC and net assets. So check the net assets taken over. PC already I have. I'll start with assets. One by one. First one. Land and building. 550 and 400. Plant and machinery. 350 and 250 investments 150 and 50 stock current assets 350 and 150 debtors 250 and 300 bills 50 and 50 cash and bank 300-200 total is 2,000 and 1,500 that is the asset side total Reduce outside liabilities from this. Going from bottom to top. First one is bills payable. 150 and 70. Creditors. 270, 120. Debentures, settlement values, guys, settlement values changed for debentures. Debentures, settlement values are 40 and 20. It is not 60, 30 anymore. Last one is secured loans. I'm sorry, secured loans itself is debentures. Nothing called a secured loan, that's it. That's all for my outside liabilities. Outside liabilities are 460 and 210. Oh, that will give me net assets. Taken over. Fifty and twelve ninety. Compared with the PCs. 1650 and 1200. First case, goodwill. First case, goodwill is 110. Second case, capitalism is 90. Net goodwill is 20. So if you have enough information, you can go for the balance sheet of C Limited.
equity and liabilities, shareholder funds, share capital, equity share capital, total it, 400 plus 300, 700. 15% preference share capital 500 check your discharge in your discharge we already calculated everything reserves and surplus first one is securities premium total of securities premium 150 plus 100 250 250 plus 800 plus 600 that will be 1650 Though it is purchased, compulsory reserve to be taken over is investment allowance reserve being a statutory reserve. Don't forget to put an amalgamation adjustment account as well. 100. Non-current liabilities. 15% debentures. Forty plus twenty, check your discharge rebentures sixty. Current liabilities. I have two current liabilities. First one is creditors. Two seventy plus one twenty, three ninety. And then I have bills payable. Two twenty. Assets, non-current assets, tangible fixed assets, one, first one, land and building, add both 950, plant and missionary, Add both 600 intangible asset goodwill twenty. Now we just calculated goodwill of twenty. Non current investments, other non current assets, investments. 150 plus 50, 200. That's it. Go for the current assets. One second, guys. Under non current assets, not just investments, we'll also have amalgamation adjustment. Investments is 200, correct? But along with that, I'll also have to write amalgamation adjustment account. Exactly equal to the investment elements reserve, 100. Come to current assets. How many current assets do we have? We have stock, debtors, bills receivable and bank balance. Stock, debtors. Bills receivable, cash and bank balance. Come on. Stock, 350 plus 150, 500. Debtors, 250 plus 300, 550. Bills receivable, 50 plus 50, 100. Cash and bank, 300 plus 200, 500. 350 plus 150. Sorry guys, this is 250 itself. Total is correct. Huh? Total I picked up from the balance sheet now. Hmm? 
बैलेंस शीट टोटल इज थ्री सिक्स टू जीरो 